Hello and thank you for joining the midweek edition of Journalist Hangouts. I'm Ayodili Uzubakun. Today on the program, confusion reigns in APC as Court of Appeal upholds suspension of Adams Oshomole as national chairman. Senator cries for help over killing of four policemen. More civilians in Niger State as kidnappers threaten to abduct village head again over 4 million Naira ransom balance. And later on the show, Journalist Hangout Midweek Special features on Rain of Bandits. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Kolade Otitoju and Solomon Ajuzegu. So we are ready. Let the Hangout start now. Thank you for joining us. House of Commotion is how APC, a court of appeal judgment on Tuesday, now upholding the suspension of the APC national chairman Adams Oshomole has thrown the party into confusion. About three factions are battling for the soul of the party, with the September governorship election in Edo serving as a stomping ground. Babajide, it came yesterday, at about the time we finished the program, that a court of appeal, not a judgment, has in a ruling told Adams Oshomole to step aside as the chairman of the All Progressive Congress pending the determination of the main case. Yes. And a lot of people saw this as opportunity to lay claim to the leadership of that party. As at this morning, the Gaydom led group addressed a press conference. This afternoon, the ones loyal to um, Adams Oshomole by extension, um, Senator Ajimopi, who is meant to be the deputy national chairman, actually addressed our own press conference to go in ahead to set up the panel for um, Edo State. Jide, just give us an overview, to make it simple to viewers what is happening and what is the position. Well, um, remember, I think in the second week of March, I was in Abuja and we looked at this matter and I said, the Oshomole made a mistake from the beginning. The his suspension should have been challenged. Mm. Yes, it, should, it shouldn't have allowed it to even get to this that point. That was level. Yes, uh, it was suspended. They didn't even have a quorum, but they went ahead, suspended him. He should have challenged it at that time. Maybe he felt that they would not be able to go far. But the truth is, in, given the whimsical nature of our judicial system, anything is happen. Anything can happen. So we had at that time a situation in which the APC members, including the leaders, were pulling in different directions like um, the kind of rivalry and fight for game between hyenas and lions. Hmm. They are never best of friends. Hyenas like to steal lions and, and prey. Uh, once the lions have, uh, have killed um, a prey, they, 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 they will come and a clan of hyenas will come to the scene and intimidate the lions with their huge numbers and take custody of the prey. That was how I saw them and that was how I described them. What happened yesterday clearly was targeted at helping Obaseki to take control of things in Edo State. Well, it came a little late. I also want to believe that for the Oshomole group, they didn't foreclose totally the possibility of this happening. You will see that not only did they, immediately they disqualified um, Obaseki, within 48 hours, the appeal, appeal court, uh, I mean, the appeal, appeal committee, committee ratified it. it. Mm -hmm. so, that, <laughs> so that whatever judgment came yesterday would not affect what had happened. I've had people, some people, you know, when these kind of things happen, everyone becomes an emergency lawyer. 
I've had people say, oh, all the decisions that Oshomole took are inconsequential. But the decisions he took were permitted by the court. Because the court, once the court gives a stay of execution and says you can continue with your job. Remember when that decision, when that first decision was made by the court, he stayed away from the um, mm. party secretariat. He mm. stayed away. Mm. But the stay of execution enabled him to return to the party secretary and continue his work. So mm. no one can say that all the actions that he took as chairman of the party were null and void because the courts, the courts permitted him mm. to take those actions. And once the court says, no, at this point, you can no longer um, uh, exercise your powers as the chairman of the party, it stays mm. like that. Mm. So that is the uh, situation of things. It, it makes no sense to say all the actions that he took. Okay. The, the other lap of the question I want to ask you, the Assistant Secretary General that actually addressed the press conference this morning yes. now went ahead to nullify mm -hmm. what the uh, screening committee did and he called on aspirants mm -hmm. to come again between today and tomorrow. I read that his text so that they can be rescreened. And let's wait and see whether uh, you will be able to screen anybody. You see the NWC, you see the neck, where they did derive the, uh, his powers from. This is just um, an attempt to ambush everyone. You see, they left, um, he, he resigned from the party. I mean, he resigned his position mm. to contest as deputy governor in River State. Ideally, ideally, they should have ratified that designation. But they left it because they were trying to bring him on side. Remember people like Abdul Kadri, who had uh, fought Oshomole for some time. Abdul Kadri is back with them now. That's the national vice chairman, not uh, Northwest, mm. the Sokoto man, the mm. lawyer. He's back with Oshomole and Co. Mm. They were reaching out to him in the hope that he would be able to come back to them. That was why they, did, they left. They didn't. Uh, so that is like a booby trap for him now. No, hold on. I'll, I'll get to I'll get somewhere. So when they left that position for him, they were hoping, okay, he could come back, and become part of us again. He will be on our side again because Oshomali actually started a, a, a started a reconciliation moves. That's why people like Shwaibu, the uh, uh, the man from the northeast, mm. came back. You know, mm. he too was suspended. Mm -hmm. So the plan was to bring Giadon uh, back. So they left this issue unattended, they didn't ratify the uh, resignation. But immediately, uh, the, what happened yesterday happened, and they saw his moves, they went quickly and then ratified the, the resignation, which means that he is no longer <laughs> no a member a, uh, <laughs> yes. of the so NWC. <laughs> I asked people because the impression that people gave was that, oh, he had taken over the sector. That, you know, the social media is an avenue for Reckless rumor mongering. Mm. So I asked people, I said, as uh, Giadom taking over the secretary of the party? And they said, no, that they didn't see him there. <laughs> so the truth is, the NWC, as the decision making organ of the party, has taken a decision. What the law says, section, um, that may be section 14, subsection, uh, subsection 2, uh, hold on, section 14. Uh, two subsection three mandates the party in, in the absence of the chairman the deputy chairman from this from that zone from the south because they have two deputy chairmen one from south one from north Shuaibu is the person from the north mm. now it mandates that the uh, a person from the south to take over now um, the person who should take over is not um, is not uh, disposed at this. Mm. disposed at this time. Mm. So the decision is that the the person from the geopolitical zone of the, the the deputy, the vice chairman from the geopolitical zone of the chairman should then Absolutely. take over, that, and that's, that's why Hillary Eta. Okay, has taken over, and there was a meeting 
13 of them physically present, in fact, including I, the woman leader. I have the signature here. I yeah. have uh, the attendance sheets here. And then three, three of them were yes. uh, attended uh, uh, by, by virtual uh, means. Yes. And then and the decision was taken. So if there People are 21 signed. of them mm. and 16, 16 mm. out of 21 took this decision, then you cannot say that the NWC um, uh, has done anything wrong because that's clearly the majority. They went for that. They, they went for that to set up um, the committee for the primary election. Don't forget that yeah. that is next Monday mm -hmm. to and set up and the appeal, and the, the appeal committee. Yeah. And the Senator Hope Uzodima was actually the governor of Imo State, was, is the one to lead mm -hmm. the primary election yeah. in Edo State. Yeah. That's yeah. Um, with APC. Uh, but um, before I come to that, oh, okay. I think we need to go to the beginning of the beginnings. Okay. And this matter shouldn't have got it. Without prejudice to what uh, GD said about uh, Adams or Shomali not having appealed um, the word, exactly mm. word 10, mm. precisely. Uh, um, the, 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 the word what's suspension. The is village, oh. Iyamo. Iyamo. Yeah. Iyamo. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Word 10, suspension. Then going on to the LGA. Then going on to the state. Mm. Now, these are just the first three levels mm. in the administrative process for the suspension of a member of the NWC of, of, of that party. If he's right? a member of NWC. Yeah, if he's a member operating at that level. Mm. So you have the ward, you have the LGA, you have the state, then you have the NWC itself, then you have the NEC, which is the mm. highest ruling body of that party and this is what the constitution says mm -hmm. and i must say here categorically that the issue with this whole suspension thing is a bit funny because at the first three levels you have done what you are supposed to do but then that does that is not valid when the nwc and the nec hasn't even ratified don't forget there's an administrative precedence to this mm. moise banire Mm, in, Lagos in, this, in Lagos State. Mm. So um, I'm, I'm a bit worried that some hawks in the party are Moses trying was to. was suspended uh, in motion. You know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it was suspended in motion. And, and all of the, that. The letter was submitted to the states. But the NWC, see, the NEC. Led by Oyegun that Oyegun time. Did not, did not ratify it. Did not ratify and, and, and as it. As and as long as that ratification does not take place, what happens? You, can you say he's suspended? It's just like the local government thing. You say that the state has done everything that it's supposed to be done, mm. but then the National Assembly then has to pass it on. And so mm. you say that the creation of those local governments are incorrect. Mm. So mm. what we have here is a process that has not been followed through. Administrative process for the suspension of the chairman has not been followed through. In any case, Oshomale has not been removed as the chairman of the All Progressive Congress. Mm. He's only been asked to step aside. So, Pending the determination. determination here, not just legal, mm -hmm. but also administrative. Because every time you hear, oh, pending the determination mm -hmm. of the issues the, the around the, issue. the, not just mm -hmm. the cases in mm -hmm. court, but also you have administrative issues here, all right, that these are the NUC, NWC, are the NEC, these cases have not been dealt with. And then you are in court as well. So we have a whole lot of things to go through. Now, it's also amazing. So imagine that um, how do but you the suspend? The NWC has passed, uh, has since passed a vote of confidence. Exactly, and, that's what we're saying. So it's not being ratified. It's the court, but the problem mm -hmm. is the court. Okay, the, court, so, the cases so are in the court. Yes, no. They must so, first dispense with so those. So they look at it and, and you know it takes time. It could time. get to Supreme Court level. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So but, in a, 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 and then a chairman that has fourteen of his people behind him. Sixteen. So, so you have that number behind you. You look at that. How is it possible that these things are happening if some people in the party are not just trying to rock the boat and all of that? But I think that as things go, um, the constitution of the party, I think, is so straightforward. The structure in the party is so straightforward. From what I see, the man who should take over from Oshio Mole while he steps aside should be Senator Ajumobi. Ajumobi who is the uh, uh, vice uh, chairman Deputy South? Deputy chairman. Deputy chairman mm -hmm. South. Mm -hmm. And then in his place, mm -hmm. if he is not available to take over, will be the mm -hmm. vice, vice chairman South South, mm -hmm. who is Larietta. So I, I don't see why people are causing all this turbulence. Jire, let me bring you back. This takes us back to where we stopped. You know, we've been talking about several attempts to remove Oshomole. Mm -hmm. That's 
that will be the clincher to the groups within the APC, yes. that the anti Oshomole element, and mm -hmm. some people have described them as all this burning to is going down to the ambition 2023 mm -hmm. presidential ambition. Mm -hmm. So, if we put a name to them saying that, oh, this um, particular uh, faction, it seems they will not stop at anything to make sure that Oshomole is out of that position from the look of things, because I don't know what can give this deputy secretary the um, effort to address the press today with a few members of the ESCO. <laughs> I I the, the, um, we shouldn't waste too much time on Giadom. He did a similar thing when he called for that meeting. And the president showed leadership. That meeting didn't take place. Did the meeting take place? The mm -hmm. answer is no. So it's been shown repeatedly that he's just an impostor. He does not have the powers that he's trying to arrogate to himself. The truth is, the president has to talk to some elements within the party who do not recognize the fact that 2023 is still far away. And they are trying to tear themselves apart. Because of 2023. Hmm. Look, whether we like it or not, Obaseki, yes, Obaseki matter is there, but at every opportunity, the different tendencies within the APC try to uh, position themselves, try to emasculate one another, just with the 2023 in mind. You understand? Look at what is happening in, uh, in, uh, in um, Rivers now. You know that the chairman of Magnus's um, uh, faction. faction has now been recognized by the court. Hmm. And the APC National Court has said, we will work hmm. with. with. <laughs> so, oh, do you expect Amechi oh, oh, to be happy? The calculation no, you with see, the leadership. <laughs> even the people <laughs> who organized the last coup hmm. with Oshio Mole, we know them. We know them. The last coup against Oshio Mole. The last coup that <laughs> failed. <laughs> When that uh, court decided to return from uh, this earlier decision mm -hmm. to adjourn mm -hmm. Sine Dai, mm -hmm. to now mm -hmm. say, okay, we grant him stay. The truth is, it will be very unfair for this matter to drag on for too long when it is not even the substantive matter. The substantive matter is to determine whether he was duly, duly suspended. A man who was uh, elected at the convention of the party, mm. the national chairman of the party, mm. can only be removed mm. by the convention, the national convention, that is the biggest mm. uh, uh, organ mm. of the party, the biggest decision-making mm. organ mm. of the party. We've not reached that point. Mm. And now you said, okay, step aside, good. But in my view, the judiciary has to ramp things up, things up, Fast. so that that decision. Because, things are because we move, we, we are, we are, we are dealing with jurisdiction, and it's taking this long. The substantive matter is still there, <laughs> and it is clear that it is clear for anyone who knows the law that APC has a constitution, and the constitution stipulates how you can remove somebody or suspend somebody of Oshomale's stature mm. because he was elected mm. at the national convention of the party. Mm. I was, somebody said, what is going on? Why can't they call a neck meeting at this time? And I was speaking with another IPC leader and he said, how do we call neck? Neck is a much bigger mm. uh, organ of the party. You can't call neck at a time like this. Mm -hmm. It will be in clear violation of the COVID uh, 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 protocols. Because you know the president will be, all the elected governors mm. on the platform of the party. The president, the vice president, the, senior president. All, the national, speaker, yes, all of all, all those, those guys. And uh, from each of the zones, there will be three House of Rest members representing each of the zones. Mm. You know? So the large number can't even make the, and the president, must, you must get the president's buy-in before you can uh, call it neck meeting. 
where he will be in attendance, the, his deputy will be in attendance. How do you call that kind of meeting, neck meeting at this time? It's difficult. But you know, if you, they can call it, it will solve all of these problems once and for all. But it's difficult to, to even contemplate it at a time like this. People will say, oh, they are the same people who say they are fighting COVID-19 and they are, they are gathering. Now, okay, I think I have a call, a, a call from Jalingo. Bobby from Jalingo, thank you for joining us. Hey, hello. Uh, good evening. Good evening, Bobby. Uh, good evening to Bobby today, too. Uh, I just want to just uh, confirm one, one issue. Is it possible for Obaseki that has resigned out of the APC to now get back to the APC again? That is just the question I just want to ask. I thank think you Bobby so much. read my mind. <laughs> well, well, I wanted to you ask yesterday. yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Yesterday, when we were discussing this, you said he was uh, inevitably on the way to the PDP. And I said he had not told us. This morning, he tweeted saying that he had not joined the PDP. <laughs> you know? 48 hours. So, no, I, I, said, I said at that time that he, he has not ruled out any move. He will be watching closely to see if tendency, the tendencies uh, sympathetic to him can seize control of the party. Of APC. Of APC. After announcing, after going to the villa to announce, uh, coming out from the villa. And he addressed the, people. He he addressed people. No, there is no document. <laughs> he has not officially, even the APC, when they were asked, they said they, they have not uh, received any formal uh, communication to that effect. If he goes back to APC, that would be dishonorable. We don't, I don't even, I don't know. <laughs> but you politicians reconcile and they, uh, they, they go back. Don't rule out the possibility of uh, reconciliation because I know even some big people within the party spoke with the national chairman to say, look, try to give this person a soft landing. Let's not rule out. In politics, anything is possible. They are politicians. We are not. We are just journalists analyzing. Mm -hmm. By the time they begin to do all those, they are midnight meetings, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., we will be on our beds. We won't know when the, the, the same person who abused you, call you names, can still say you are, you are, you are, you are the best thing since sliced it's, bread. It's already happened. It's huh? already happened. It's already happened. So, so that, 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 that's now the thing. Now Isiamu is not the beautiful bride. Uh, yes, well, because happened. you wanted to defeat him by all means at that time. He said all sorts of things. Yes, but today we see his bride. <laughs> this is beautiful bride. <laughs> <laughs> Solomon, now, when you look at, they are working on timeline, very tight rope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't envy Obaseki right now. I don't envy Obaseki. Obaseki right now, mm -hmm. should that be... Some are even saying that he, 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 he left too early. That, yes, that, mm -hmm. they, that they actually, mm -hmm. the interest, mm -hmm. the interest, st interested stakeholders that Jiri is talking mm -hmm. about, told him to Hold exercise a little bit. A little bit. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe you are looking at um, the temperament of a politician because first, you must be an incurable optimist of a particular level, of a particular breed to be a politician. Um, you must see, you must be far-sighted about the issues that are before you. Um, yes, whatever decisions he has to take, he has to take them very quickly, very tactically. And uh, he must also not... If today is uh, Wednesday and the primary will exactly. on Friday. He has to take it. So he's looking at his options. If he's going to take part in the PDP primaries, then he has to take very quick decisions. What the implication of those decisions he has taken so far is now left for him to carry. What if they move their primaries? <laughs> and he yeah. needs all the assurances. Yeah. They can move it by yeah, few days. Of course. He needs can, all the assurances they want, but all the deadline for submission is 29th. Uh -huh. so, so whatever yeah. they want to do. They, uh, so so, so mm -hmm. the, the point is, um, we look at politicians and the way they operate. Um, anything 24 Okay, hours. let me take this call. Uh, Patrick is calling us from the United Kingdom. Thank you for joining us, Patrick. Uh, thank you, GD uh, and uh, Baba GD and every one of you that evening. Thank you. Thank you. I, I want to uh, just uh, say a little bit of uh, thank you for the opportunity to contribute. Uh, this is uh, an indication that no one is untouchable mm. regarding the appeal court upholding the suspension of. Adams or Shomole. And uh, this should be a lesson to everyone who sees himself as a power broker or a godfather. 
the way he has handled the crisis, I don't think that was a responsible way of bringing a party or growing a party to mm. represent the interest of the people. Okay. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, thank you for your contribution, uh, Patrick. Uh, the the, mm -hmm. the truth is, our people are very sentimental on issues. Many of them, including those who have made a career out of abusing us because we chose to say the truth, they fail to realize that the president, Mr. President, set up a reconciliation team. Abi, mm. what did Obaseki say? He said he did not have faith in those people. They, they removed the person who headed that committee. The first one was headed by the Senate president. I remember. They put Baba Konde there. Mm. Did he agree to be reconciled? The answer is no. All avenues for reconciliation. People advise, let those lawmakers that you stop them, let them come back. Make a fresh proclamation. Yes, make which, a fresh proclamation. Which is a the National of... Assembly intervened. He did not agree. But it's convenient for those who hate Oshomole. Now, Oshomole has his failings. I've always criticized him on this program. But they, they, they've forgotten. They failed to mention the fact that he has frustrated attempts to achieve peace. You are blocking the road leading to the home of your national chairman. Is that how to achieve peace? You are telling him to seek permission Before from coming you, from coming to, to his, his state. state. You, Somebody some, who made you, you cannot governor. Tell a farmer. <laughs> something you cannot tell a farmer. In a, in a country state. where we have free mo uh, freedom of movement, people don't look at all these things. They just, oh, he wants to be a godfather, and by all means, he wants to be a godfather, this and that. Oh, yeah. So they have to, it takes two to tango. What were the moves? that Obaseki made to seek peace. You know, the elderly people, when they want to make peace between a, a younger person, they will say, Egmoeni, Oya, Dobalefun, Kija, Tonsibe. That's how they do it. Meaning? Meaning that this person is your elder brother. Oya, apologize to him, let it end. Did we see that? But all of that is just a show money that they are abusing. And when I, I appealed to Obaseki, I used to support him. On this program, I know how many times we can play back how many times I abused the Shomale that he has not provided leadership. But we, I also advised Obaseki. I said, Obaseki, stoop to conquer. You stoop to conquer. And just make sure that you stoop to conquer and everything will be fine. Did they listen? The yeah. answer is no. Okay, we'll take this breather. When we come back, we'll talk more. It's still journalist and guys. We'll be right back. Winning program journalist Tangout. We're reaching you live from Television Continental here in Lagos. And Solomon, I think the leaders of the party should now step up and try to salvage the party because in the last 24 hours, you don't want to know what I've read about APC. No, no, the truth of the matter is that there must be a storm before a calm. It's a natural process. Um, why will the leaders of the party step in if there is no storm and if the storm has not peaked? Because when a storm is raging, except you have the powers of Jesus to steal the storm, you have to, the control you have to take is when you begin to assess the level of disaster and how to step, step in there. But I must say that at this point, that basically what they are going to do is what you still call reconciliation in a way. Already they are stepping up. Um, we've, we already know what the line of succession is. First and foremost is that Senator Ajumobi, who is the Deputy National Chairman South, is supposed to take over. In his absence, you have the, Deputy, the Vice Chairman South South. That, that is an established fact of the constitution of the party. But I must say that in bringing this matter to an end, that first and foremost in reconciliation, in politics, is it's first about interest. You cannot stand to the right and stand to the left. The interested parties cannot stand to the right and stand to the left and then say they are reconciling and nobody is making a move towards the center because first, in politics, you must give concessions and you must arrive at consensus. What we are having here is a situation where a party is refusing to make a move towards the center where a consensus can be attained 
for the resolution of the problem. Now, the thing is this, to always, I take exceptions to it when people talk about the issue of Godfathers. One of the things, everybody who raises the issue of Godfathers or questions the issue of Godfathers is someone who is naive about politics because politics is there as an instrument for the taking of power because that is what is we important. We have to wrap up on this. Babajide, your last words on this particular, I know it's going to be um, a raging issue in the next couple of days yes. and I know that this is not the last we are going to hear. Ultimately, I'm sure that uh, the lasting solution will be... Yes, I know that um, the matter um, will get to the Supreme Court. It's inevitable. But the Supreme Court rarely sits to grant a stay. It's very, very rare. The Supreme Court to sit to grant a stay. They like to, they, they like to dispatch the, sure, sure. Uh, the case the, you know, just the case. quickly. They don't mm. like to waste time. So to grant a stay, sit to grant a stay is, is a reality for Supreme Court in recent times. But it's still possible uh, for pressure to be mounted on them. That look, that's a big matter for which uh, we will want you uh, to, to, to help resolve, you know. So, so the, the, best thing, Adams the, right the best thing for Adams is if that happens quickly. Ultimately, he will regain his seat. You understand? Of execution. Ultimately, he will get. He will. He will. He will, he will, he will take back his position. It's just a matter of time, because the uh, uh, the, the organs of the party that should ratify suspension, they are not likely to do that. So what I'm saying is, the best thing for them is for the Supreme Court to sit quickly on the matter. And if they sit quickly on the matter, he can then get. Um, maybe a stay of execution until the substantive matter is decided. Mm. That will enable him to uh, carry on with his job and lead the party to those two upcoming elections. But if that doesn't happen quickly, then uh, those in acting capacity, who in any case are largely his loyalists, will continue to run the party. All right, we'll leave that for now. So. Now, to our journalist hangout midweek special, which focuses on the reign of bandits that have turned northern Nigeria into killing fields after some relative peace in some states like Castina and Zamfara. Banditry in form of killings, kidnapping and cattle rustling is escalating the security situation in the northwest. TVC News Ayoyinka, Ayoyinka Adeni files this report on banditry. Nigeria, Africa's most populous nation, has six geopolitical zones. Of the six, the Northwest Zone has been the most affected by banditry. Banditry has affected populations living in Zamfara, Kaduna, Niger, Sokoto, Kebi and Katsina states, leaving about 21 million people exposed to extreme danger. Unconnected to the Boko Haram insurgency in the Northeast, the banditry violence began as a farmer header conflict in 2011 and intensified between 2017 to 2018 to include cattle rustling, kidnapping for ransom, sexual violence, and killings. The discovery of gold mines and the activities of illegal miners competing for the control of gold reserves has intensified the activities of armed groups in the northwest. Castina State is one of the most affected states in the northeast Nigeria by the problem of insecurity. Governor Aminu Masari, aware of the problem, set up a committee that will give amnesty to bandits who were ready to give up criminality and embrace peace. Not all of them agreed, but quite a number of them agreed to uh, put a stop to the uh, menace so on January 15, uh, 2017. We were able to, 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 to converge in uh, Ankara, where we collected about 400 assorted uh, firearms from these bandits, who is including the notorious then 
Baharandaji came and surrendered. Governor Masari visited the eight frontline local governments that had become killing fields in the seemingly endless conflicts between bandits and farmers. They are Safana, Dandumi, Sabua, Damusa, Faskari, Jibia, Kankara, and Batsari. Many people were quite surprised to see the governor in the bandit's den sandwiched between gun-wielding armed men without a care in the world for his well-being. So if sacrificing my own life will ensure security of over 7 million Latino indigenous, so why not? Because the people that are being killed are also uh, governor's statement that they are uh, Nigerians. The only difference between me and them and the governor and their ordinary people. For a long time, peace reigned in Katsina, due largely to the amnesty program, which saw bandits making some demands, including schools, water supply, roads, and electricity. So safe was Katsina State that in 2018, it played host to refugees fleeing killings by bandits in Zamfara State. But by the middle of 2019, the bandits had resumed attacks on communities in Katsina State. In Kaduna State, the government is partnering with security agencies to ensure the security of lives and property by ending the activities of bandits in the state. This banditry has become a northwestern uh, scourge and um, we have been battling it uh, with the support of the military. I, we are very grateful to the Nigerian Air Force, the Nigerian Army, and uh, in, in, in our own particular state, even the Navy uh, has been holding fort in uh, southern Kaduna. So we've been dealing with this uh, issue. Uh, and our concern now is with the operations in Sokoto and Zamfara. Many of the bandits will move to Kaduna. This is part of the reason why I'm here. I will be meeting with the Minister of Defense and uh, the service chiefs to try to get uh, more uh, military activity some operations to be strengthened. Recently, Governor Aminu Tambuwal of Sokoto State met with President Buhari asking for more military intervention to check the activities of bandits in the state. Most of the times stray into Sokoto from either Katsina, Zamfara sites and then some of them from Niger Republic. So, 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 that's, that's, so that's why the area became prone uh, to all of these attacks. And, um, and, um, uh, from the very uh, initial information we have is that um, uh, the, the, the pressure, the pressure that they are on, uh, under from, from, from the coordinated efforts in Katina and Zamfara is what is actually also giving them uh, some, some kind of uh, 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 advantage. So we have requested Mr. President to, to, to complete the loop of the entire area. Several army operations have been launched, but residents say most have been largely ineffective. The appeal of the community is uh, request urgent need for military intervention because this is, these people have taken over this place. But continuing armed bandit attacks in Nigeria's northwest have increased internal displacement with no corresponding humanitarian response from some of the states affected by the crisis or the federal government. For the women and children living in the IDP camp are in serious problem. They are worried, you can see from their faces, these people need assistance, both from the government and fellow citizens. The Northern Elders Forum in a statement said rising insecurity in the northern region is strong proof that President Muhammad Buhari and the northern state governors have lost control in protecting the people. Recently in Katsina State, hundreds of residents in Yangana community in Jibia local government area blocked a highway to protest repeated attacks by armed bandits in the community. President Mohamed Buhari has called for calm, promising to improve security in the affected states. I regret recent sephardic incidents with tragic loss of lives in Katsina and Borno states as a result of criminals taking advantage of COVID-19 restrictions. Security agencies will pursue the perpetrators and bring them to swift justice. I implore state and local governments to rebump their intelligence assets so that the security agencies can nip in the bud any planned attacks in remote rural areas. 
I send my heartfelt condolences to all the relatives and the communities affected. I think even the military have to re-strategize by now because we cannot continue like this. And Nigerians are asking questions. They are getting worried. So this is what government can do. Don't play any more kids' glow. No matter whose ox is God, deal with them. Because we don't want a situation where some people are even claiming that uh, uh, some northern elders or even some governors are supporting these boys. You know, we should face it straight on and deal with it once and for all. The plague of banditry that encompasses killings, kidnapping, theft and sexual violence is a terror that has left tears in the eyes of many. With amnesty programs and military operations failing, one must wonder when an end will come to this crime. Yimika Adeni, TVC News, Lagos. Welcome back. Uh, Babajide, Governor Amino Tambua actually summed it up that within that axis, the heat they were facing right from Zamfara, from Zamfara to Castina, mm -hmm. from Castina, and we've always been saying it consistently on the show. So that the government will need to do something to just, you know, run them off you know, across the northeast. You know, we the northwest. The, there has to be coordinated operation. If we want to rely on military operation to asphyxiate these guys, then it has to be coordinated. It has to happen simultaneously. Because usually what they do is, when, when you, you hit, hit them in Zafara, the they move off. to the, uh, maybe uh, Kaduna, all of those states, Kaduna, Kasina, Sokoto, they, they, are, uh, they, they share common borders, you know, Kebi. So if you hit them here, they go to somewhere else where they can hibernate. So you have to embark on a coordinated operation. When we send the special forces to um, to Kassina. I felt that there were other states around them that we should have also sent uh, those troops so that there's no escape. Because this is what is happening. You, they, 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 they will have peace in Zafara, but neighboring uh, Kassina, they won't have peace. So that has to stop. And we can do that with coordinated uh, offensive. Hmm. Short one on this. Yeah, yeah. I think um, the issue, um, you see there's a general pattern along the Sahel savanna regions of, of West Africa, basically. And I think that the issue of armed struggles and banditry of this nature have increased since the separatist movements in Burkina Faso and Northern Mali, you know, have spread their tentacles. Mm. Um, basically, I think that there are lots of issues surrounding this that we really need to deal with. If we have stop the issue of the illegal mining is going on, which we thought had exacerbated all of these problems. And then the issue of uh, farmer headsmen clashes in those regions. Um, of course, I think that also allied to this is the issue of global, global warming, where, you know, there has been a lot of crisis within that belt, the Sahel region of the continent. And you have a situation where arms, you know, light weapons are infiltrating and then streaming down south here because of you know climate challenge issues you know around West Africa basically. Hmm. Now, the cry for help by the senator representing Niger East, Muhammad Musa, is another sad testimony to the festering insecurity in Nigeria's north. Senator Musa raised the alarm after bandits killed four policemen and many civilians in the states. In Kebi State. Kidnappers have threatened to abduct a village head over 4 million naira ransom balance as police offered 5 million naira for information on Castina bandits camping. Jide, what is happening? This is ridiculous. Yes. Um, They're terrorizing them. The in Niger bandits. State, bandits have been running riot in Niger State. Um, you know, this issue is not simply about, oh, mining sites here and there. Some of the worst places affected by banditry in Zamfara, they don't even have gold deposits. So it's just like looking for an excuse when they say, oh, it's because mining was taken. Okay, we said we, we, we have stopped them 
uh, stop the companies from mining the uh, mining in that area. Why hasn't uh, the thing stopped? Why is it that in Kaduna, in uh, in uh, Kasina, in Sokoto, in Kebi, in Niger, where there are no gold deposits, these things are still happening? It's because the bandits now see this as pure business, and our people uh, and the security agencies must descend heavily on them. If you go to the Shiroro area now in Niger State, your life is at risk because they are constantly killing people in the Shiroro area, in the uh, Rafi local government, Kagoro, uh, Tegina, all of those areas where we used to enjoy night travel in those days, driving through all those areas. You dare not go from uh, Brindengwari in Kaduna, Kaduna State, from Buruku, uh, uh, Brindengwari to Brindengwari in Kaduna State. People have abandoned that road, and it's a lot shorter to get to Lagos through that route. But people have abandoned because Brunigwari is like the headquarters of banditry in Nigeria. Hmm. So this is the thing. That's why I'm saying, look, we need to stop these killings. We want to find a way to stop these killings. You yeah, look at a local government like Faskari in Kasina. They are killing people almost every day. And they kill people in large numbers, dozens. Yet we have not been able to stop this. One of the bandits was saying in one audio clip that, oh, it's because of the bombings by the Air Force that they have now resorted to killing people in this manner. And I'm like, so you want to be left alone? You are killing people? You don't want the Air Force or the, the Army to respond in any way? We have to show these people that in our country, they will not be tolerated. If you are those of them who are coming from outside Nigeria to come and kill our people. So no. At least the government, the primary responsibility is the security of lives and property. Right now, it is looking so, so difficult all across the north. Yeah, the north west, north the, east, north central. The case of Niger State um, is a bit uh, befuddling. It used to be a very peaceful state. Mm. You know, um, I remember traveling a couple of times and staying there for some time. Um, Niger State is the biggest state in terms of landmass in Nigeria. So, you also have the challenge of um, you have the challenge of policing this particular large landmass. Mm. Maybe that's a challenge on its own. But you must also understand that the terrorists or these bandits have become so brazen because over time, um, maybe we haven't done enough over time. This thing is an accumulation of things that had happened in the past that we had abandoned and they become such a huge behemoth that we now have to deal with. Now, Niger State also, you know, has border on the, on, you know, on the side to Benin Republic, Northern Benin Republic and all of that. So you find out the majority of the states that suffer this problem uh, have borders lying with, uh, you know, other, have international borders. Um, and you can see an easy infiltration of small arms. And I think that it's not just a Nigerian thing. I think that the leaders of the economic community of West Africa, uh, West African states need to really come together to deal with the issues here because we have seen the inflow of these light arms. Uh, we have seen uh, we really need to check these easy movements, how these things come into the sub-region and when people, uh, when bandits take hold of these things, what do they do with them? Once you have a gun, a lot of people see it as license to commit crime. And I think this is what they are doing. Um, except we are really able to bring them to justice, they will just keep going like that. If they, have, if they have now seen it as a business, then that's another problem on its own. Don't you think our military is overstretched, Babajide? They are, they are. And um, it's such a painful thing that we didn't consistently, as a policy, um, make recruitment a yearly affair into the armed forces, even the police. For years, we didn't recruit into the police. Now we are facing a problem of ungoverned areas, places where there is no military presence, there is no police presence. I've been to some of those places, a GP and local government that is extremely dangerous to go to now. I was there uh, in the third quarter of last year. And this place, you won't even see police. You will travel, you know, many kilometers, you won't sight even a policeman. So presence. when those uh, remote communities are attacked, Sometimes it takes hours before any form of response comes from the security agencies. So this is the situation. We need to recruit more into the police. 
we need to recruit more into the armed forces, especially the army, mm. because we want the army, we have lost faith in the police, so we want the army to be everywhere. We think mm -hmm. our people fear the army more. We want them. Uh, yes, uh, more yes those guys <laughs> are simply not enough. Even in Borno State, we've not put enough soldiers on ground. To man those local governments. To man those local governments. There are many local governments that people are not living inside them now. Mm. You know, mm. but that's a matter for another day. <sighs> Yes. You know, so with, with, we just need to with, do a lot more than we are doing. With, with the military formations in Niger State, I expect um, that this sort of thing shouldn't happen in Niger State. You have a tactical air command, you have um, several military bases, you have in Mina, the Trad 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 yeah. you have uh, in New Busa, you have um, another Kanji base. Kanji is where uh, you have uh, the base of the, the uh, Alpha Jets. Uh, Alpha Jets, you know, tactical air command. And then you have the um, Nigerian Army base there as well. So Absolutely. with the huge military presence mm. in that place, I think that Nigeria can snuff these guys out in mm -hmm. Niger State mm -hmm. particularly and most of the states surrounding we'll Niger so. State. We yeah. hope so. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Solomon Ajuzo. You're welcome. Thank you so much. And Baba Jide Kolade with Tutoju, the master himself. Thank you. And that's our package today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. You can also watch Journalist Hangout on our platform showing on the screen. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash News Nigeria. Our feedback channel is Journalist Hangout at tvcnews.tv. I'm Ayodili Uzuba. We'll see you tomorrow and God bless Nigeria.